men came in black. When I look out and see hundreds of people, you make me awful proud. We're my colleagues that came from Cayman. Thank you for being here tonight. And I'm going to try to not talk so much business and mix a little bit of politics in tonight. I'm running Cayman Brack West, Little Cayman. My colleague Juliana O'Connor Conley is running Cayman Brack East. But if you for one minute believe that those two should be separated, dog eat your supper. We are working together. It would surprise you the number of times that people in the Western District talked to Julie, and Julie calls and said, Mose, have you heard from this one yet? And I said, no, not in the last couple of days. And she will tell me something that needs to be done West, vice versa, East. So when you elect a team to represent Cayman Brack and Little Cayman, you realize that the islands have to be united, they have to work together, and nobody should try to separate us Brackas and Little Caymanians. As the Premier said, when we go to Cayman, everybody not nice. When Julie says, we need more money because we need a capital project, Minister Archer said, we're going to have a look at it. When I say, boy, you know, we just need a little more lift, colleagues say, we need something else in Baden Town. But we understand clearly that each person in this country has to get their due and get what is due them, education, health, a good place to live, a place to prosper. And that's what this government has been committed to. And that's what they've done by working together. And that's why the two representatives that you send the Grand Cayman from Cayman Brack and Little Cayman, there cannot be any surprises on the next day. It has to be very clear that when they leave here that morning to go to form the government, that they're going together. They know that the progress must continue. And as we have been saying, we're doing good with phase one, but we're so, so excited to go to phase two. When you look at somebody to represent you, you look for leadership. Just close your eyes and think about the morning after Paloma and the destruction of this island and the leadership that evolved, the community spirit, the coming together, each person making sure the other was fed. Juliana O'Connor Connolly and Moses Kirkconnell working together with a progressive government to make sure that money was put in place to rebuild this island. That woman didn't back down, let me tell you. When she looked out there and said, we need more money for our people, we went together, we sat with the government, and Kirk Tibbetts, now Premier, Mr. Baden was there, they were all supportive of making sure Cayman Brack remained in the mode to become whole again and not left to suffer the damages that were caused and the people that didn't have the proper insurance coverage. That was taken care of by leadership and working together. <laughs> the other important part when you have a small developing island on the early side of its economic cycle that is driven by the spend that comes through public sector. You have to make sure that you have the wherewithal and the commitment from the government of the day that they are going to protect that part of your community. And I am very proud to say 
that four years running after we came out of the budget cycle, Julie and I could come back to Cayman Brack and say to the district commissioner, what we have here now is more than we had last year. And it enabled us, because of looking at how we were going to grow the private sector, to increase jobs, to raise the salaries of those jobs, and to diversify some of the jobs that were made available. And that's how we have to continue. <laughs> Just think, if we weren't able to do that, what would happen to the jobs at Public Works? What would happen to district administration? What would happen to the social programs? What would happen to the very way of life that we're used to getting up to every morning and enjoying? But let me assure you this, that won't happen on Julie and my watch. We talked about what we needed to do and how we wanted to look at a sustainable economy for Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. And we identified the number one need to take us to the next step was improved airlift. The improved airlift had to start with an improved air terminal. <coughs> we know that within the first year of after the last election, working together, the airport was completed. It was put into a situation approved by the United States Homeland Security that the continuation of US flights could come into Cayman Brac and it could also be used as the secondary airport for Grand Cayman, which Southwest has now identified and helps them in how they come to Grand Cayman. It also allowed us to bring more flights in and to create more jobs. It is a small example of how working together and using the assets that you have available turn into public sector jobs driven by private sector. And when you put the numbers together, you see 30 plus jobs that have been created by Cayman Airways, back office jobs in a call center that Cayman Airways has opened here in Cayman Brac. You also have fireman jobs that were provided and the, the nucleus of the airport completed and the airlift with the new seats put in increased 18% in the last two years. An increase of 18% arrival numbers in two years. I think you can see that through the community and the tourism industry. And it continues to give us opportunity to build that because as the economies of the world change, you have to understand that people come in different ways. Vacation rental by owner, Airbnb, inexpensive to advertise now to bring people here. One of the properties that is the most heavily booked is the McMurdy property in Spot Bay. But you can see it spread throughout the island of the properties that are coming on board and using these assets to bring more people here and more arrivals come in and it creates more jobs. In that nucleus there, I also make mention, remember we had an accident with a fire truck. And the first thing we did that day was go to the hospital and find out how those two firemen were. And tonight I say to the ones who anonymously wrote on blogs, Derogatory things about this to those two firemen and the firemen of Cayman Brack, shame on you. If you want to write it, that's your, free, that's your freedom. But put your name by it. As you look at our product and you look in the days and you see people like Kino and Shavela and Philip interacting the young ones coming on board and interacting with the people that come to enjoy our island, it makes you see the potential and the gift that we have here in this beautiful island. And the Kim and Brackers, we are what they come and we come back 
to see. Our competitive edge in the industry is ourselves, is the people that they come here and the ones that come and visit. And then you give them a little prog to leave with and you told them about when you want them to come back. That's what we're known for, the friendliness in the Cayman kind. And we'll continue doing that. And we certainly see the Water Authority heading east. Go east, young man. And they continue to go east, and they will get there. We already know there's a reservoir platform that's been put in the center of the bluff by Aston Ruddy to continue water throughout, pipe water throughout the islands. And you continue on what we've tried to do with the capital projects. We have not used the money in an unwise way. Minister Archer, it's been spent frugally. I know you, you like that. And I think you can also see as you drive around the benefits from it and the benefits that are going to come through phase two. And I give you the example. We built a FIFA certified football field. In two weeks, we're going to have Cuba, the Bahamas, Jamaica, and Honduras here playing on that field. But we also have it every day for the youth in our community to use and be guided by a sports team that teaches them. And if you look at the quality of individuals that these young people turn into and the program that is guided by the people here, Mitchum Sanford, and a new group that he's brought along, all you can do is be proud when you see the successes that they've had. <laughs> the swimming pool that we broke ground on last week is $1.8 million. And it's going to do the exact same thing. It's going to give a quality of life to the young people and the elderly on this island. And it's also going to allow us to exchange sports tourism because as the swim teams come, they make lifelong friends and they understand how nice Cayman Brack really is. So that is a phase one that turns into a phase two. The multipurpose hall, in the next few weeks, you'll see that start to completion. The project has a, a $2 million capital budget to complete what's there, with the business case being looked at for how it will be turned in and used for a school, using it in the right way as an asset. New boat, safety of lives, new K-9 unit for customs, district admin, new trucks, new equipment, issues for quality of life. Faith Hospital, HSA, chaired by Mr. Jonathan Tibbetts, um, right here from Cayman Brack. A new building will be started in two weeks up there, 2,500 square feet for storage. Gives you more room inside. The helipad has already saved a couple people's lives by having the helipad there. A new ambulance is on its way. An ER doctor will be here in June, thanks to the Premier and the help with the budget. Dental clinic, the dentist now has more days to be on Cayman Brack and actually is going to live on Cayman Brack. And of course, the rest home for the elderly continues to get support, as Minister Baden said, and be expanded. <laughs> the incentives in place for bringing private sector are easily available. They're online, but it's duty concessions for, purchase, for bringing in billing material. It's a reduction in the trade and business license for the micro businesses. It's, it's wanting to establish the type of businesses that can benefit from being on Cayman Brac and looking at creating the environment for back office jobs. And the incentives are available, they're being strengthened, and we will continue to work on that in phase two. The good news is that we now have a new art studio that has recently opened. Yes. We have culture once a week that artisans go to the hotel and very well recepted, received. Spoken about the Airbnb, La Speranza, Rochelle moved back home and is involved with 
Mr. Bussey, and we... We certainly wish Mr. Bussey well tonight after his surgery as well. So, and a new eye clinic has opened on Cayman Brack. Joey says I got five minutes. So where does this put us? It puts us in a situation that the number one reason that was identified that uh, for us to create a sustainable development on Cayman Brack and Little Cayman was airlift. It puts us in a position that when we speak to Dr. Shetty in Health City, that we can tell him about, we now have the seats in the market that's needed. When we talk to Enterprise City, who have been here six times looking at different businesses to relocate, they see the way that you can now get here and the lift. When you talk to Carnival Cruise Line or the other cruise lines about a cruise birthing facility on Cayman Brack, they understand that you can get here and they can come have a look at it. And when you talk about alternative energy, for Cayman Brack and Little Cayman, it is a very good thing to say that in a short period of time, you will have a major announcement about solar energy in Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. But for us to move and complete phase two, I need your help. I need you to vote for your two representatives here in Cayman Brack. I need you to look at our team that we have representing the other parts of the island. And I want you to take a good look at them. Do you see anybody there needs a job? Not one of them. Each one of them are very satisfied in their personal lives of the successes they've had. But they also have made a commitment to give back to this country, and I commend them for that tonight. When you look at these people on this stage, I want you to think that any one of them could be called tomorrow to go to London to speak on behalf of this country. I would be proud to send any one of them, or go with them myself. You also have to think that they're going to represent you nationally. They're going to go on the radio. They're going to go on TV. They're going to be in front of 100,000 people talking about what their beliefs are and what they stand for and what they want to do to benefit you and the children and the next generation of this country to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to have the most that we can enjoy out of this life that God has given us. These are the people that can do that. Colin? No, you're going to have to wait till after the meeting. So just hold on. Hold, hold on, OK? I don't want to do anything with you. I want to finish what I'm saying. OK, I'm coming to you. Um, and you also have to be able to be recognized and deal locally, eye to eye, face to face, as when Colin Scott comes in front of you and says, I want to talk to you and tries to distract you. Thank you, Colin, for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to speaking to you a little bit later. That's what you have to do, and you have to be ready and willing to represent people locally. We live in three small islands. I want you to remember this. In these three small islands, an election does some very unfortunate things. Sometimes it tears families apart. Sometimes it tears communities apart. Sometimes it tears churches apart. But as has been said before, if you were going to have surgery, you would look for the best doctor. If you were going to, to have your car repaired, you would look for the best mechanic. When you look at your loved ones, 
your friends and the people you've associated and grown up with your whole life. You love them. You respect them. You take care of them. But then you also look at who can best represent me to give me the best quality of life and to move my country forward. So tonight, I ask you to remember this. For the ones that are your family and the ones that are your friends and the ones that are, are good people, give them all your love. Give them all your love. But the ones that are here that can do this job, give them your vote. Remember that.